Howdy folks, Gomer here with another Port Charles vlog. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to try and keep these weekly. Who knows, I might record several at once and keep them up to date over the next few weeks so I don't have to worry so much. Um, I admit I have actually had to stop myself from going because once it got towards the end of the week, it got going really well um, to pick up where we last left off. Um, if you missed the last one, you can go watch it. Um, but for those who just want a quick recap so they can watch this episode... Um, uh, seven new, seven new interns, they were all held hostage by Greg Cooper. Uh, Cooper was eventually taken down after, you know, you know, killing the, the, uh, former Dr. Redshirt chief of, not chief of staff, but, um, resident doctor or, or whatever, whoever it is that is, you know, over the interns or whatever. And one of them, Joe, uh, he operated on longtime character Audrey Hardy with a power drill and some duct tape <laughs> because that's all he had at the time. And it was either that or she died. Um, uh, during this week, that that plays a little bit out, a little bit more up front, uh, where you know everybody is dealing with it, everybody's finding out, and by the end of the week, Joe is you know re really ready to fight, um, you know fight the board as, ne as necessary. Um, and even though he can't officially start his internship yet, he can still observe with, as as per the hospital rules. So. So he's able to do that. Uh, throughout all of this, we learn more about Karen, about her background. Uh, those who don't already know that, you know, she is Scott Baldwin's daughter. Um, that Lee was the one who ended up pulling the strings for her once once Cooper was booted. So it, it wasn't that Lee got uh, Cooper booted. It was Cooper was booted, and Lee is like, oh, hey, opportunity. Let me get my granddaughter in. <laughs> so, um... Uh, so, uh, and, and by the end of the week, uh, Karen is offered to help Joe, you know, she's like, you know, you know, you need to get a lawyer for this. And Joe, Joe's like, uh, nah, I don't know, I don't know. And, um, so she did, turns out the lawyer she's getting is Lee, uh, Scott's father from a family of lawyers, uh, <laughs> or something like that. Um, oh God, wouldn't it be great if Franco turned out to be a lawyer? <laughs> okay. That, that a little off topic there. Um, but yeah, Scott. He, he's still looking around, still accusing Lucy and Doc of, of kidnapping Serena. And Lucy's been trying to keep it because she wanted to be so perfect. And then eventually, while the cops are gone, you know, you know, she, she lets out that she was that doctor so-and-so. And while the feds are off, uh, you know, you know, making sure that's factual and accurate, checking it out. You know, she's able to tell Doc right there in the interrogation room that, yeah, we're going to have a baby. <laughs> um, which, it's you know. A little frustrating, but I, I can understand where, you know, like, character-wise, where Lucy would be coming from. Um, of course, Doc is happy about Lucy about, you know, be having his kid, but, you know, and all of that. And Scott, for most of the week, does not un does not realize this because after he storms out, uh, when Lee calls us and innocently says, yeah, we have your daughter here, not realizing he means his older daughter. <laughs> um, you know, and, uh, and well, you know, Scott gets over there, and he, he sees Karen, and, and 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 at first he's kind of rude, but then he's like, oh, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I'm just trying to, you know, my daughter, my, you know, Serena's been kidnapped, which I think Karen is a, you know, I hope is a little more understanding about. Um, I know I as a viewer is. Um, and then Scott gets hit by a car, and he's laid out in the hospital for the mo majority of the week, um, up towards the end where he wakes up from a dream of of. of you know, a good time of, of having a picnic with his daughter, and he goes in to grab an apple, which I'm, you know, I'm glad they kind of kept that. Um, that's one of those things that they they haven't used much lately on General Hospital, but um, one of one of the things that I've noted about Scott is just the love for like apples, just oh, you know, which I'm really sad that they haven't really shown that very much. Ah, uh, but you know, who? Oh well, um. Oh, what else is there? What else is there? What else is there? What else is there? But, oh yeah, Scott, you know, he, he starts getting up out of bed. Uh, Eve, one of the interns, comes in and sees him getting out, and he plays off his, like he is a, like he's his own lawyer and threatens lawsuits. And Eve, of course, only comply, has to comply because, well, you know, cover the hospital's ass, which she has yet been able to explain because she did get in trouble for it later. Um... Because, uh, likewise, another one of the interns, Julie, saw her pushing a wheelchair in, and she thought it was all innocent. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, she didn't realize it. Um, 
Uh, Scott ends up at Lucy and Doc's place, which, by the way, they made reference to Sigmund. Sigmund is their pet duck. They have a pet duck. I love it. <laughs> oh, that, they haven't shown Sigmund yet. They, they will eventually, but they haven't shown him yet because, holy shit, they have a pet duck. <laughs> oh, which I don't, it's not really made clear in the context of this particular week. Uh, it, it's another one of those things where you have to have been watching the original show for a while to get it, but that's okay. You know, most be, most people at the time they they most likely if they're watching Port Charles, they were already fans of the original, so it's kind of a good callback for them, and they can tell their friends who are just coming in fresh. Well, wait, wait, Sigmund, who the hell is Sigmund? Sigmund's their pet duck. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, so so Sigmund was brought up, but but. Anyway, uh, Scott makes it over to Lucy and Kevin's, and and he starts, you know, he's obviously weak because they had to take out his goddamn spleen. And Scott, the the determinator that he is, he's he's trying to find Serena because hey, you know, he this is his daughter, so you know. Um, so he gets over there, and Lucy is like, "You need to lay the fuck down," and and Scott's like, "No, you have her. Yeah, I heard her in here." And it turns out Lucy was just watching home video. <laughs> And this guy's like, "Oh shit, I am so sorry." Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he, I don't know if he actually apologized, but then he realized, "Oh shit, I was wrong," uh, one way or the other. Oh, um, uh, Mac with Mac Scorpio, who is at least at this point, I, I, I say temporarily because he does become the police commissioner again. Yes, yeah, spoilers. Um, I don't know if they go into it on Port Charles, but definitely on General Hospital by the time. Uh, the Cassidyne, you know, Stavros Cassidyne makes his way back, which is about two years after these episodes have aired. Uh, Mac is commissioner again, so so it's at the very least temporary that he's been fired, and now he's freelance. He's doing all the legwork, detective work, finding Serena, um, all of that good stuff. Um, but he also makes mention of a of, of why he was fired. Um, I think I, I had it on the wiki not too long ago, but. Um, but it was it was like this case where, um, oh god, oh, oh shit, <laughs> oh lordy 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 lordy, but um, but it, but even the wiki doesn't really make much mention of it. There's like a little bit for his character, but that's about it. Yeah, and yes, I I am looking at the wiki as as I'm looking at it, but even that that's not really much help in that. Um, the most we get out of in the context of this particular week is that uh, Mac was fired because he arrested this guy. Um, what I can tell you, he was a mobster, and um, he was arrested. Be he, he, Mac was fired because he arrested the guy without any evidence. So, boop, there you go. Um, so Mac's freelance now. <laughs> um, and uh, Dr. Quartermain, uh, Alan Quartermain, uh, he actually pays a visit to Joe, you know, to just let him know, you know, hey, you know, you know, watch yourself, you know. It's great to be passionate, but you gotta, you gotta hone yourself and you gotta control yourself a little bit better. Um, you know, being so brash and hot-headed, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do well for you. And he's, he's not trying to, you know, be an ass, even though Joe almost immediately goes off on him. I can understand because, well, Joe did what he had to do to save Audrey's life, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, but, and, and after that meeting, even Joe was like, you know what, Dr. Quartermain's just doing his damn job. You know, can't really fault him anymore. Uh, oh, wow. And Frank, he, he's... I, I'm, I'm reading that he's a little upset, you know, that, that Joe has not been forthcoming with him about all of this. Like, like what the hell? Review board, you're, you're in danger of losing your internship. Dude, what the fuck? Why, why aren't you telling me this? Um, we're also introduced to their mother, <laughs> who... Oh, who's going? Oh God, it's been so so long since I've seen that character on screen. It, it's it's kind of amazing. Um, she's a little overbearing. She's more than willing to like like when her sons are tired, she'll just walk into their house and just clean up shit for them. <laughs> in fact, they come home after the whole ordeal and they're like, "Oh wait, we do you have a break in? Everything's clean, Mom." <laughs> so, oh, that, that was a nice touch. Um. Oh lordy, um, and and throughout, throughout all of this, uh, they're actually turning their basement into a rent-out apartment, and this is how Frank meets Julie. <laughs> um, uh, Julie is 
you know, she's tired of living at that hotel, and she was actually using the shower at the hospital when Frank was in in the uh, intern's, uh, you know, restroom or, or whatever the hell that is, to just just put up the thing, and, and he accidentally pricks his finger, and it's kind of adorable that how, the way the two of them meet. Um, it's kind of neat. Of course, she's also wrapped in nothing but a towel. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. And there's also Dr. Chris Ramsey. He's, he's not gotten a lot. He got a little bit more focus towards the end of the week. Um, that, that girlfriend he was with, she came by in nothing but a bathrobe and a beautiful blue corset. Oh my god. <laughs> Corsets are kind of cool, you know. I mean, I mean... Never mind the fact that she's attractive as fuck, but, you know, she's, you know, nice blue corset. Blue, one of my favorite colors. Corsets are really nice. There you go. Um, and, and, and and I feel like that that particular setup is like, it, could they get away with that nowadays? I mean, this is 2015, and this was back in, what, 97? Daytime 97. Hey, you know, you could get away with things like that, apparently. Um, but she finds the file that, the file that Chris nicked, and... Chris suddenly becomes very cold and ends up just dismissing her, and, and of course she's pissed. Uh, so, and we see more of we see more of Chris's personality coming out and being developed. He he is a slimy, uh, manipulative snake, uh, from what I'm gathering from all of this. Um, just this early representation. Um, so yeah, and and definitely reveling in the fact that Joe might be fired. <laughs> And, and even Karen kind of lampshades it a little bit. She's like, yeah. she comes in when they when they're all about to have their like first meeting with uh, the new intern over person, um, and she she you know she walks in and she's like, well, I guess you could say I told you so. <laughs> so but but yeah, um, what else is there? Am I missing anything? Oh, I'm missing a few things. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh wow. But the the new head of of the the interns is uh, Dr. Ellen Burgess, who is you know likewise a new character, um, who was introduced who was not introduced in the pilot, but you know you do see she is introduced. She is basically she's basically uh, um, described as a really great doctor, but horrible bedside manner, <laughs> and and very punctual down to the last second even. Which I think was it was I think it was Eve who timed it, but um, so far I'm I'm liking Eve as, as at, at this point. Um, you know she's got a bit of snark going on, a little unsure about certain things, can get people into trouble, but you know, but hey, you know, and at the end once once everybody has realized oh shit, uh, Scott's not in the hospital, he he just like left on his own volition because you know. The Terminator, fuck everybody, I need to find my daughter, which is understandable. Um, Eve finds out, Eve realizes, thanks to Karen, that she, he's going to be at Lucy and Doc's, and she goes and tracks him down, that's where we leave her. Um, presumably pissed because, well, he managed to get her in trouble. Uh, but, you know, she has yet to be able to explain it to Dr. Burgess, uh, who, of course, laid into her a little bit, like, uh, yeah, um... He, he could he could be dying out there. You you really should not have let him go, um, you know. Ah, uh, but you know, and and even Julia was like, hey, you know, I wasn't trying to get you into trouble. And Eve's like, okay, whatever. Uh, those two. Mm. Um, Doctor Harmon, Matt, you know, the the guy in the wheelchair. Uh, he didn't get too awful much this week. Um, I mean, I, I what I do know about him further on it. it it it'll make up for it, I think, eventually. But you know, he doesn't get too much this week. Uh, Joe offered like the apartment to him, but it's a basement apartment with a lot of stairs. Oops. <laughs> but you know, Joe being Joe, he's willing to work get, work something out if if he wanted it. But Matt passed on it, so um, just based on this, looks like Julie's gonna be there. <laughs> and and Chris so far has been using uh, Julie's file to his advantage, I guess. Um, like uh, that that morning, he called Julie, and he had just you know with 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 the whole mindset of talking to her because oh my god, last night was so horrible, you know, and even Julie has been having nightmares already. We've seen one where it was like a younger Julie. She's calling out, I think, Buddy, I think, um, 
and and you know she's calling out to him come come or whatever and then suddenly gunshot um which leads me to believe that um yeah i think buddy killed himself uh, and bear in mind uh, i i do know some things that'll have to do sir, some of these characters um this is actually one of those things where i'm kind of a little gray in so this is a pure guess um uh, but yeah you know there, and we get a little bit of extra time with jake um who i don't think i talked about much in the previous video because he's there's not too much to him uh he's kind of a loner uh, he had girl problems, I say had, because by the end of the week, the girl he's been pining for and thought about, thought he had lost or whatever, came back and said, yeah, I'm back, and they immediately got to fucking. <laughs> no other way to put it, they just immediately got to fucking. Uh, uh, <laughs> to be fair, I probably would react the same way if I was in his position. Um, so, you know, a little relatable, I guess. Um... And definitely late because he's got coping issues with with girlfriend problems. Although now they're not so much anymore. At least not yet. <laughs> oh, um, ah, what else? If I missed anything, what else am I, am I? Oh, oh, one other thing that we have that we have seen. We have seen Serena, as in like not flashback Serena or anything. Um, she is someplace someplace nice. And whoever it was that took her managed to bring, managed to get all of her, most of her stuffed animals with her, except for like her, the cat that she was given at birth and her favorite blanket. Um, you know, those aren't with her. Scott had them. And, and she tells the guys, it's okay, guys. It looks like we're stuck here for a while. Don't worry. Daddy will come and get us. Um, which, you know, of course, I, I, I'm pretty sure she's trying to comfort herself that way too. Very, very you know very strong strongly written little kid at this point and at least i i see it as such she's not breaking down at least not she's not shown breaking down um she might be a little scared but you know um yeah i think that's about everything in terms of like recap or anything um in terms of like writing and pacing it, it's it's still a little rough um some of the actors are still getting into the skin of their character it's like i've noticed that you know, some of um, oh god, whatever her whatever her actor's name is, uh, uh, the lady who's playing Karen, uh, you, I can tell that she's, you know, she's she's like falling flat a couple of times, um, but I I think that just you know these characters, you know these actors, are are just needing time to grow into their new characters and all that stuff, um, and obviously the the veterans are are decently okay, um, writing. I'm just like, uh huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Again, it's it's all still a little shaky. It's it's still like first month writing. You know, we're we're just you know dipping our toes in the water. We're 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 treading out there. You know, we're still in the shallow end. It, it, you know, we're we're gonna work on it. Um, obviously it gets better because it it did run until 2003. <laughs> Got better enough. Better enough. Um. Ah, uh, let's see. Do I have any major? Oh, one other plot point that I did neglect to bring up uh, is Karen was at one point thinking of just leaving Port Charles after all of this because, you know, it really affected her that what ended up saving the day was the very thing she was trying to forget and that's her being a stripper. Um, you know, and everybody's like, no, no, man, you, you did what you had to do. Even Joe was like, you, you, you did what you had to do. You know, whatever. You know, I mean, nobody's thinking twice about it. You know, I mean, in fact, if it wasn't for that, they probably would all be dead. So, yeah, you saved everybody's lives, you know. And, in fact, she was the one who helped get Scott to the hospital. You know, got the paramedic. Got I, I think, like, Lear or Gail got one of them to get the paramedics. And, and she was there to do the triage thing. And, and I, I'm not too awful sure. Uh, but, you know, she helped save Scott's life. Uh, and, um, yeah, I think that is about all I've got for this week. Um, if if you guys watch through it and you notice I missed anything, uh, let me know. I'll be sure to cover it in the next video. You know, you know, kind of like a recap. Of like, oh yeah, I missed this. You know. Um, but yeah, so it's a little bit, a little bit shorter this week, or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it's it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, 
thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, next week, we'll tackle another week, you know, another five episodes. I think it's five episode week next week. Middle of June, it better be. Um, so yeah, if you like this, um, you know, you can do the usual things. You can like it, you, su you can subscribe, you can comment. If you do like it, please, please share these around. Because I'm pretty sure others would like to see it. Don't just don't just hog it all to yourself like a Waffle House cheeseburger, okay? Just, you know, like it and share it. You know, other people can enjoy it too. You, you don't have to keep it to yourself. <laughs> um, and if you want to help more directly, uh, I do have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. Um, you know, for as little as $1 per production, you get this, my Let's Play videos, video reviews when I finally get one done. Um, just you know, podcasts, everything, just right there early. I tend to upload this stuff in batches, so you could get, like, at most, like, three or four of these um, in advance, uh, depending on the month. Um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, but you get all these, all, all the videos early, um, and I do have some higher tier levels for, like, you know, like, um, requests and, and things like that. Um, but that all is at patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. And she doesn't do the title cards for this particular series, but she does do some of my title cards. Uh, my wonderful girlfriend, wonderful, wonderful girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who can be found at beckhop.deviantart.com if you just want to look at her stuff and if you want to commission her and help her with, um, you know, website funds for uh, her comic Otherworldly, uh, check out patreon.com slash beckyhop. Uh, all the links are going to be down there in the doobly-doo below. <laughs> and speaking of her webcomic, do check it out. It is called Otherworldly. Again, links are down there. Check it out. You'll like it, especially if you're a fantasy buff. So with that, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do look forward to your feedback. Please, you know, if I and if I miss something, let me know and I'll put it in the next week and and probably bump myself in the head for it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys. And until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, signing off. Yeah.